So the issue of climate change came up at the vice presidential debate. And let me just say, first of all, I'm thankful that this topic was even discussed. It's nice to see it come up because it's uh, it's kind of important, to say the least. Uh, having said that, though, this was not a great portion. Um, I think that Kamala Harris walked into some right wing traps that Mike Pence set. So, you know, uh, he was trying to press her on her support for the Green New Deal, being a co-sponsor of the Green New Deal. And she kind of tried to, you know, brush that aside. And then he tried to claim that Joe Biden supports a ban on fracking. And then she, you know, looked into the camera and said, Joe Biden does not support a ban on fracking. And listen, politics 101 is you do not run away from what's popular. And I think AOC made a really great point about this on Twitter. She said, you know, even though the Green New Deal has been lied about repeatedly with people saying that it's going to amount to a ban on air travel and cows, literally, conservatives have said this, it's still incredibly popular. So you don't run away from a popular policy. You don't. Now, when it comes to, you know, fracking, you should just be realistic and say, listen, our, our position on this is that we... You know, we're going to reduce fracking. We won't issue out as many permits for fracking. But the goal ultimately is to get off of our dependence on fossil fuels. Like she kind of instinctively ran away from the good policy, which is never a good look. But I don't want to harp away on Kamala Harris's response, because even though I was disappointed ultimately with her, not entirely, but in, in some portions, Mike Pence shit the bed on this. He shit the bed because he couldn't even admit that climate change is real. He would not admit that climate change is real and it's man-made. And in 2020, if you cannot admit to man-made climate change, which is a fact, you are not a serious person. So this came up, watch this exchange. This was uh, infuriating and I wanted to slam my head against the desk watching this. Do you believe as the scientific community has concluded, that man-made climate change has made wildfires bigger, hotter, and more deadly, and have made hurricanes wetter, slower, and more damaging. You have two minutes uninterrupted. Thank you, Susan. Well, first, I'm very proud of our record on the environment and on conservation. According to all of the best estimates, our, our air and land are cleaner than any time ever recorded. Our water is among the cleanest in the world. And just a little while ago, the president signed the Outdoors Act. It's the largest investment in our public lands and public parks in 100 years. So President Trump has made a commitment to conservation and to the environment. Now, with regard to climate change, the climate is changing. But the issue is, what's the cause and what do we do about it? And president Trump has made it clear that we're going to continue to listen to the science what exactly would be the stance of a Biden-Harris administration toward the Green New Deal? You have two minutes uninterrupted. Sure. So first of all, I will repeat, and the American people know, that Joe Biden will not ban fracking. That is a fact. That is a fact. I will repeat that Joe Biden has been very clear that he thinks about growing jobs, which is why he will not increase taxes for anyone who makes less than $400,000 a year. Joe Biden's economic plan, Moody's, which is a reputable Wall Street firm, has said will create 7 million more jobs than Donald Trump's. And part of those jobs that will be created by Joe Biden are going to be about clean energy and renewable energy. Because you see, Joe understands that the west coast of our country is burning, including my home state of California. Joe sees what is happening on the Gulf states, which are being battered by storms. Joe has seen and talked with the farmers in Iowa, whose entire crops have been destroyed because of floods. And so Joe believes, again, in science. I'll tell you something, Susan. I served, when I first got to the Senate, on the committee that's responsible for the environment. Do you know this administration took the word science off the website, and then took the phrase climate change off the website. This, we have seen a pattern with this administration, which is they don't believe in science. And Joe's plan is about saying, we're going to deal with it, but we're also going to create jobs. Donald Trump, when asked about the wildfires in California, and, and the question was, you know, the science is telling us this. You know what Donald Trump said? Science doesn't know. 
So let's talk about who is prepared to lead our country over the course of the next four years on what is an existential threat to us as human beings. Joe is about saying we're going to invest that in renewable energy. It's going to be about the creation of millions of jobs. We will achieve net um, zero emissions by 2050, carbon neutral by 2035. Joe has a plan. This has been a lot of talk from the Trump administration, and really it has been to go backward instead of forward. We will also reenter the climate agreement with pride. Senator Harris just said that climate change is an existential threat. Vice President Pence, do you believe that climate change poses an existential threat? As I said, Susan, the climate is changing. We'll follow the science. But uh, once again, uh, Senator Harris uh, is denying the fact that they're going to raise taxes. He was asked whether or not he believes in climate change. He says the climate is changing. Now, if you aren't savvy, I could see how you might interpret that as, oh, okay, so he does believe in climate change. No, that's doublespeak. What he's admitting here is, or not admitting here, is that the climate is changing because of human beings. So usually when conservatives use this talking point, which comes from the fossil fuel industry, mind you, what they're saying is, look, climate change is a naturally occurring phenomenon. The climate is always in a state of flux. It's constantly changing. And that's technically true. But what we're talking about with regard to climate change, specifically anthropogenic climate change, is the rate at which the climate is changing. It is not natural for our climate to change this fast. That's the issue here. And I've never seen a moderator on a debate stage call this out. Yes, the climate is changing. Sure, you admit that. But do you admit that it's changing at a faster rate because of human activity? And, you know, he gets off scot-free, essentially, because he says, well, the climate is changing. That doesn't mean that he believes in climate change, because if you don't believe that climate change is man-made, functionally, you are a climate denier. That's a fact. Because the whole issue is whether or not it's man-made to them. Because if they can argue that it's not man-made, then the implication is, well, if it's not man-made, then there's nothing man can do about it. It's just natural. So we just keep polluting. We keep fracking. You know, we keep uh, destroying the environment in order to boost the economy. And, you know, it, it's it's dirty. It's, it's a deceptive trick, but that's what conservatives do. Now, Kamala Harris brought up how she believes it is an existential threat, and she's correct on this. Um... Mike Pence was asked, do you believe climate change is an existential threat? What is his answer? The climate's always changing. So he wouldn't say that it's an existential threat. So on a national debate stage, he just tacitly admitted that he is a climate change denier in the year 2020. This is not a debatable topic anymore. We are past the days where, you know, uh, it's acceptable and appropriate for the media to try to be neutral here and say, well, you know, some Republicans say climate change isn't real. Democrats say it is real. No, it's real because the scientists say it's real. I don't give a shit what fossil fuel funded Republican politicians say. Climate change is real and it is an existential threat. And because there's so much evidence, that's why Republicans have had to constantly move the goalpost. They would just outright deny climate change altogether by saying the climate isn't even changing. In fact, it's not getting warmer, it's getting cooler. Trump, in fact, still says that sometimes. But they keep saying, okay, well, climate change is real, but it's not man-made. So they keep moving closer and closer to kind of accepting that maybe there's something going on, but they'll never admit that it's anthropogenic and generated by humankind because they don't want to take action. So this was uh, egregious. I think that, you know, this doesn't really need much commentary. I don't have to say anything because the clip speaks for itself. The vice president is a climate change denier. And I get that we're accustomed to this. And it's something that, you know, it's not surprising because the Republican Party is a far right death cult. But we should never normalize this. We should never accept it because it's not acceptable. It's indefensible. If you deny climate change, you are not qualified to be anywhere in government. The Humanist Report is fake news. Mike only cares about Crazy Bernie and his wacky socialist ideas. Sad, very sad. I'm unsubscribing. <laughs>